Alrighty guys, so it's another day. I'm gonna be doing some idle tuning. Well, my car is already tuned, the idle is already tuned, but I'm gonna do a quick tutorial about how because I see it ask a lot on the forums, on the emails, on the YouTube videos for basic tuning. So we're going to cover some idle tuning. My car is already pretty well tuned around idle. Um, background, my car is running basic distributor, so I switch back to basic distributor and batch ignition for now, but the principles still apply a minor differences between basic distributor and sequential idle tuning because the values would be different and sequential will ultimately get you a usually a pretty leaner idle you, you can push it a bit leaner and better idle quality with sequential but for the most part the principles are still the same so stay tuned guys Okay, so I have Tuner Studio open. It's a software which you use to tune your Tuner Studio, your Speedway or Mega Squid. Right, so you're going to need a uh, some sort of tune file on your car. And for this one, we're going to assume that your car already runs. Um, I made a previous video. You can check my previous videos on how to get your car started on a base map. So we're going to assume that your car is already able to start and run. Currently, my car is cold, as you can see, 29 degrees Celsius, and my IAT is at 32, so it's a pretty hot day. Right, so it will help if you have a good spark map for your car, and you know what your car generally likes to idle about. Um, Hondas generally like about, depending on if it's, well, they generally like about 15 to 16 degrees, some more, some less, but that's generally what they like. And then my car has a pretty good fuel map. But we're not going to bother with this. We're going to be bothering with this lower left-hand corner of the map. Uh, my car generally idles around 1,000 to 1,001 RPM. It doesn't have an idle control valve, so I prefer about 1,000 to 1,001. So we're going to be just be adjusting about here. Um, if it idles about a thousand, so it will be between these two cells. So we usually make changes about one cell to the left, to the right, sorry, and one cell above because idle will dance a bit. Okay, so we're going, you're also going to ensure that your injector data is correct, right? As much as possible, try and get these correct. These are mine. Mine will be a bit different because I'm using some EV. Bosch EV6 injectors from a Toyota Free FGE. I don't have injected data. What you see here is just a result of me going through some trial and error over the last couple months and I think years. I've had this for about these injectors on my car for about two years, I believe. So my injected data is pretty good, but you would have to ensure that you have yours. So we're gonna get started. Right, so Okay, let me give you a, one more tip. So we're going to be adjusting the VE table mostly to get idle squared and the spark table. Right, so I'm going to ensure that my car is up to temp and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so my car is up to temp. Um, I deliberately threw some extra fuel. So you can see my car is in around 12.5, about 45 kPa and 700 RPM. So it's not optimum. Right? So the goal of idle tuning is this is the V table. We're going to be adjusting the V table and the spark table. So we get the desired air fuel ratio we want, the desired RPM we want, sorry, and the most vacuum which we can obtain out of the engine. Right? The most vacuum would be the lowest number on the engine map gauge. Right? So off the bat here, we can just go globally, right? So remember this area I told you guys about? This is the general area where my car is idling. You can see the cursor moving around here. And we're just going to reduce that by 5%. So we enter 0.95% here. And you can see immediately the engine sound changed in a bit more vacuum but every other show is pretty much about the same All right so we're gonna start by pulling another five percent
height that doesn't change much so we're going to pull another five percent so we can hear the rpm speaking up almost 850 rpms we're down into the 30s now fuel ratio is about 12.5 so the fuel ratio hasn't changed much but we getting better vacuum which is good right so we're gonna pull another five percent you can see pulling more vacuum and rpm is going up and we up to what is this we have 12 7 fa ratio so it's leaning out a bit um with batch fire i usually try to go for anywhere from about 13.5 to about 14.5 with batch fire. Um, I the 14.7, which be, would be ideal if you have an, a, a catalytic converter, but I can almost never get that with my batch fire. Because some folks do, some folks don't. It doesn't really matter to me. My guy doesn't have a catalytic converter. It's actually open down pipe. So I just go for what makes the car run smoothest. Right. So we're gonna continue. We're gonna pull another five percent. vacuum has increased once more we're down to the low 30s 950 rpm and we still about 12 7 so you see we kept pulling five percent five percent five percent if it was really far i would have been pulling ten percent twenty percent whatever it, it is i would need to get my idle squared right so i'm gonna pull maybe another three percent because it's getting pretty close down to the low 30s 900 rpm still about 12.7 fuel ratio gonna pull another three three percent all right so we can see our vacuum has gone down to 29 to about a thousand rpm somewhere in the low foot low footings mid to low footings 13.5 which that would be fine for me but you can try pulling another two percent and see what happens Let's see if we get anything better of a change we can try another two percent and you can see our vacuum has gone down to about 30 thousand rpms and mid footings so maybe we can try another two percent right then you can see our FL ratio has gone up to mid to high footings pulling 29 vacuum so we're not getting much in much more increase in vacuum by the FL ratio adjustment so right now they will just be going we can try another two percent again but we I have a feeling we won't be getting much better see look we actually going up of a change so we're here now low 
14 is 14. Remember I told you guys 13.5 to mid 14. And we're pulling down both vacuum. We can try another 3%. now so we're going to go back we're going to leave it about here a little popping out of my exhaust because my car is open down pipe so you can see on my batch fire car my car ended up around a 14 flat thereabout the most vacuum being 2829 kpa right another thing you can do at that point is well, before we leave the fuel table, you can see these are my table. These are my, the, my VE numbers. You can see around either I generally leave it, the numbers about the same with not too much change. If you have a haunting, say you have, let's say, we put a bigger number here. You can hear the car haunt. Right? So, you pretty much adjust the numbers so that we get the car within spec. So I'm just going to revert this back. Right, then you can hear the idle also steady out. So around the idle section the number usually about the same with a uh, one or two variants usually your numbers around idle if your required fuel is set properly would be around 30 to 50 mine is a bit higher um, we'll get into that in a separate video as to why mine is so high um, but generally it's supposed to be um, about 40 to 50 and then when you get to about 90 KPA, which would be around atmospheric pressure, you should be about 80, 90 thereabout, right? And then to show you guys what the effect of the spark table has on the idle, so you can see I have steady idle here. So if I go in, right, you can add a degree at a time. See the effect? Almost nothing. Nothing. Another degree. Nothing. As a matter of fact, it may, I may be actually losing vacuum. So at that point, if you don't need the ignition, don't put it in. We give the car what it wants, not what we think it wants. So let's go the other way. See, I begin removing timing. Vacuum is actually going up a tad bit. Well, we're losing vacuum a tad bit. So this car may actually want about 15 degrees. So 15, 16, they're about, I usually go about one degree above what the, the car wants. Because you also will have also stuff like your air intake compensation taking over or adding correction to your map as the idle tends to go up so I usually have a degree or two more than what the car wants so I will leave it at that you can go in here at this point and lower adjust your idle control valve duty cycle or if you don't like in my case adjust the throttle stop to get the idle down because it may be going up at that point during the process of adjusting fuel and spark so you it's a juggle between the fuel the spark and the actual air entering the engine by means of the throttle plate and the idle control valve so you could be adjusting it now and take this down to a thousand i like about a thousand to a thousand one like i said so in a nutshell that is the the quick and dirty of how i do idle tuning but like i said it helps to have your injector data correct Right? If your injector data is off, so mine is pretty close. If you look at our air fuel ratios here, 
if I turn on my headlights. See, mine goes a bit rich. I prefer it lighter than it going a bit late. Well, not much of a, my headlights are on now. And my fan is also on. My fan comes on at 82 degrees and then my, so my FUL ratio does not change. At, well, not much, by about a point or two. Right, so my guy is idling pretty good. Steady RPM, really good vacuum. That's about the most I've ever gotten from this guy in the four or five years I've been tuning. Tuning in the speed unit, that's about the best vacuum I can get. And my FUL ratios are not 14.7, like the internet says you should aim for. If you can, try to aim for that, but I usually tune for efficiency. Alrighty guys, so that's just gonna about wrap it up. Hope you guys learned something from this one. Um, the next couple days, I well, I have an idea. I'm thinking of, well, I haven't up uploaded in a little while, so I'm thinking of probably doing some live videos. Maybe when I'm doing some tuning, I might or I may or may not take some questions during the process. Um, I'm hoping to. Well, anyways, I'm hoping to try to do some lives. We'll see how that goes. Um, it will be a lot easier. I won't have to edit, and then you guys can interact. Um, tune in, boost tune in, wide open throttle pulls, somewhere where it's safe, and then I can be doing the tune in while you guys question. Um, so let me know if you guys want to see that. But till then, um, like, subscribe, share, comment, and all of those good stuff. And catch you guys on the next one. Till then, stay safe.